Hi all, Tech Teardown here. Today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I'm not going to be doing a review of an app, but I want to talk a little bit about the internet. And specifically, I want to talk about the internet and how new browsers are taking a stab at redefining what that looks like for how we browse, interact, and use the internet. So what prompted this video was I read an article in the Wall Street Journal that's titled The Browser Startups Take Aim at Google Chrome and Apple Safari. And there were some really interesting things in this article that along with the video that Josh from the browser company put out that really made me think about the internet. Now there were a couple of quotes that stuck out to me in this particular article where essentially they were talking about Google Chrome and Apple Safari being pretty impersonal, having different motives for why they actually even created a browser. And it was a really interesting look at how these new browsers are looking and thinking about what they do. If you're thinking about the Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, this was pulled from a report looking at the market share for each of these. You can see Google Chrome by far dominates with 65%, Safari 19%, and Mozilla less than 4%, and all the other browsers are all less than 4%, so I didn't even put them on here. Now, if you think of the way that most of these make money, they're all in different ways. So if you're thinking about something like Google Chrome, most of their money is coming from advertising. If you're thinking about Safari, it's really just a way for Apple to control that ecosystem. They make most of their money from hardware. And if you're looking at actually Firefox, they make most of their money from search royalties, which is allowing other search engines to bid on being the preferred or default option for their browser. It leaves us in a really interesting time where we have some newcomers. So you have Arc, Sigma OS, Beam, so companies like this are trying to reinvent what the browser even looks like. And so we know this is a really hard thing to tackle. And so most of these browsers are actually built on the back of Google Chrome and Safari. You can see that even the newcomers are needing to use the back end of those bigger platforms to build their own. But where it starts to get a lot different is when we actually look at the vision that they've put forth. You can see some quotes here on what the vision for each of these is. So for Sigma OS, they're really focused on forcing users to be a bit more organized, generally frustrated with the lack of organization features in other browsers. You have Beam CEO talking about where they're designing this for people who don't take notes, so making it really easy to find things. So things like the journal or the search mechanism, or talking about how they don't compete with other browsers and see themselves as something completely different, making an experience based on work and productivity. And finally, you have Arc whose vision is about building the internet computer and building a better way to use the internet. And so they're really trying to figure out what makes them different. The one that's figured it out the best, in my opinion, has to be Arc from the browser company. You see me already put out a lot of videos around the browser just because I think they're doing the most interesting things. But there was a really good video that was put out this week from Josh, the CEO, where he talks about the vision for the company. So he put out this video earlier in the week to give an update on Arc Browser, how it's doing. He announced some new funding that they have, which is great. It means they can do more of the neat things that they're doing. And he's explained that really up till now, they were just focused on getting the speed, performance, reliability of the service where it needs to be, and they have a lot of exciting things that they're planning to work on. And so what he shared a little bit about in this video is the vision that he has and the team has for ARC and where it's going. And so he mentions that they are focused on building the internet computer. I'll link the video, it's really worth watching if you're interested in this type of thing. I think it's really interesting to see how he thinks about the business. But he talks about the internet computer really being a paradigm shift of previously where we had computers 
like this MacBook that would get us onto the internet. The idea of the internet computer is something that has yet to be created. So previously we've had all types of different computers that took up full rooms, computers that took up space on a desk, and now we have these laptops and smartphones in our pockets, those types of computers where we can access everything. The challenge with those computers is that everything lives on the device, some of those files, unless you have them uploaded to some service like Google where things live in the cloud. And so he mentioned a little bit about how ARC would be the first internet computer. And he doesn't have it fully defined, but he mentions some interesting things. He gives an example of being able to not take a computer on a trip, let's say, to Europe and being able to use the browser on any device and being able to actually have all of the things that you might store on the desktop. So things like your pictures, your files, being able to access anything with a link is something he mentions in the video, which I thought was a pretty neat idea. Now, if you think about it, this shift to the internet computer is something we already see happening here. So there's services like Figma, Webflow, Spline, of these applications that are really power intensive that are running in a browser. Previously, you would have had to download something like Adobe Illustrator maybe, or some of these 3D imaging apps that you would download on your computer. And now all of those can run in a window browser. And so for that reason, I think Arc has the best vision out of these new browsers. They talk about Arc being your space to breathe on the internet. And so they have this really neat website. I think it's new, arc.net. And they have some really cool interactions here and just describing how everything that you care about is all in one place on Arc. So those pictures, the images, things you might have on the desktop. And so building on that vision of a personal computer that's available to you, an internet computer available to you wherever you are. And so I think they have one of the more compelling visions, but I think there are still some open questions that I have personally about this idea of the internet computer and where it can be. One of the first questions I have is, would you pay for a browser? And I think that's because there's so many things now that we pay for. So we pay for something like Netflix, we have subscriptions to different apps that we might have. Now, there's always a free tier for a lot of these, and so you don't have to pay. But one thing that I've been hung up on is, would I actually pay for a browser? And so for most of these companies, it's going to be really hard to make money unless they do advertising or have something else that can fund it. And so that leaves a few other options, but one of those would inevitably be paying for the browser itself. I'm not sure personally I would pay for a browser in the current state just based on the features that I have seen. There'd have to be some really big development to make me want to actually stay on that. But it could be a scenario with something like Notion, which I've invested a lot of time building out pages that I use every single day. To me, I've seen the value of something like Notion, and so in the future, if I needed to, I might pay for it but that's really where the value add would need to improve for, I think, all of these browsers. The second question I have is, what on the internet is actually broken? Now, I know tabs and that type of thing is a pretty poor experience. It's difficult, it's unorganized. But there's a lot of things that try to tackle it in a free way. So Session Buddy, being able just to organize your tabs with groupings. And so for me, it begs the question, is this actually broken or is it just something that feels inefficient? For those reasons, I do wonder what types of features would really fix the internet, fix the way that we browse it versus just enhancing the way that we do it. I feel like there really needs to be some big eye-opening feature that I just haven't seen yet from any of the new browsers that really changed the way in a sort of aha way that I didn't even understand this it was broken before but of course the internet should be this way and I'm not sure any of the browsers yet have sh demonstrated that it's not to say they won't get there but 
for the way that it stands right now, I'm actually not sure that the internet experience on something like Chrome, Firefox, or Safari is that broken. The third thing that I question that I have is around what part does mobile play? And I think this is because in my own experience, I rarely spend time on a desktop unless I'm at work and at work you typically have fewer choices on what browser or software you're actually able to use. So then in my personal time, I'm more than likely on an iPad or on my phone while I'm going between places or waiting in the elevator. And so mobile plays a big part of this and I'll be interested to see which of these browsers is able to tackle mobile as well and redefine what that experience looks like. I'm sure that as time goes on and they get nailed down the desktop experience, they'll be able to do more work on the mobile side and hopefully make that a more seamless experience so that you're able to do something on mobile as easily as you could do it on desktop. And so that's it for me. What do you think about the internet computer? Is this an interesting concept to you? Do you have ideas on what you'd like to see for this vision? Go watch the video from Josh. I'll link it down below. Let me know what you think. I'd be curious to hear how you think the internet computer looks like for the future. If you like these types of videos, please hit subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.